back. Okay, Bishop, we good. Okay. Yuri, Officer Yuri, where are we at now? Judges chapter 5, verse 11. Oh, I asked uh, for noise of archers, uh, Elisha. Yeah, the noise of archers. We know archers, when they shoot an arrow, it doesn't make any noise. It's something like, but that ain't what the Bible's talking about. The noise of archers is talking about missiles. Right. Can we get a bunch? Can we find one with a bunch of them being shot? Okay, that's fine. Put it on the screen. This is the noise of archers. That's the noise of archers. Read it again, Officer Yuri. They that are delivered from the noise of archers. They that are delivered from the noise of archers, meaning from the destruction. Go ahead. In the places of drawing water. Hey, in the places of drawing water. Give me that, Elisha. Find me some images on places of drawing water. When you are a water boy, like in the NFL, they have water boy. Remember that movie, Water Boy? You are a what, brothers? You're a servant, a slave. So when it talks about places of drawing water, find me some pictures of our people in slavery, please. Just type in your slavery, I guess, and come on. Just type in slavery, I guess, and just type in slavery, I guess. Just type in slavery, I guess. Type in slavery, slavery. Okay, yes. Read it again, Officer Alicia, please. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water. Wait, place of drawing water is places of slavery, servitude. Everybody understand that? Go ahead. There. There. Shall they rehearse the righteous act. You see that, right? that part right there? There shall they rehearse. The righteous act. This is rehearsal right now, brothers. This is rehearsal. This ain't the real deal. We are rehearsing for when we get to the other side. This is all, you can put it on the screen. This is all rehearsal time right now. Every man, every woman, this is rehearsal. When you're rehearsing, you will stumble. You will make mistakes. You will fall. You will flounder. That's okay. Just do what? Get back up. Get back up and don't give in. These are the places of drawing waters. Okay. Yuri, did you finish that verse? No, sir. Read it again. Read it again. Read it again. Read it again. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. That's right. So now let's go on back. Let's go back to Ezekiel 20 and yes, 37. Sir. Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 37. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. And I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Guess what? Rehearsal time will be finito. Finished. Ain't no more, no more rehearsal. Ain't no more I made a mistake. Let me repent right now, Lord. That's going to be over with. Watch the next verse. And I will purge out from among you the rebels. That's what we read in Zechariah 13 and 3. Them rebels that open their mouth and say, oh, I want to prophesy of my own mind, something I learned in America. Or are you going to open your mouth about something you learned in America? Read again. And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. Mm -hmm. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn. So God said, I'm going to bring some of you Israelites out of the country where you sojourn, God. And they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Put back on the wilderness get picture again. I like that other wilderness one with the when we see the back of the brother. Right there, that one. Read again, Yuri. And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. Notice, we're going to be in the wilderness of Egypt, and you shall not enter the land of Israel. Go ahead. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Y'all see that right there? So, rehearsal time is over. To get from the wilderness to the land of Egypt is explained in Isaiah eleven fifteen. Get that? I know I'm digressing for a moment, but I just want to show y'all again. 
case y'all forgot last week. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 15. Precept must be upon precept. Here we go now. How do we get from the wilderness to the land of Israel? Here we go. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river and shall smite it in the seven streams. And what's going to happen? And make men go over dry shod. Let's look up dry shod. Let's look that word up. Dry shod. Dry shod. He's going to smite the rivers in the seven streams and we're going to walk over dry shod. Dry shod. Read that, Yuri. Put it on the screen. Dry shod, having or keeping the shoes dry. Why? Because the rivers will part once again. Just like when we was with Moses, it's going to happen all over again. That's why Paul kept saying, the things which were written aforetime was written for what? Our learning, that we through comfort and faith of the scriptures might have hope. It's going to happen all over again. Thank you. I appreciate that right there. So let's go on back now. Where was we at initially, Officer Yuri? Second Ezra chapter 6. And Second verse. Ezra, we was in chapter, we was in 6? You know I'm forgetting. Read, read again. Yes, sir. Look for that verse. <laughs> Come on. Oh, verse 26. And the men that are received shall see it, who have not tasted death from their birth. Mm -hmm. And the heart of the inhabitants shall be changed. And turn into another meaning. So I want to I want to touch on that just for a little bit. And the men that are received shall see it, who have not tasted death from their birth. Give me that precept in First Thessalonians 4 15. Here's the precept. Because some of y'all are looking and say, What do you mean not tasted death from their birth? It's gonna Paul gonna explain it. First I know you're not and you understand, but some of y'all online, you might not get it. Here's the precept. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive. We which are alive. And remain. And remain. Unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them. You see that? Unto the coming of the Lord. There's going to be one third of the nation of Israel alive to see the coming of the Lord. Everybody understand that? Read. And Here. remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Which are dead. Go ahead. For the Lord himself shall descend, descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. So don't worry about the men and women that die before Christ come back. He said they're going to rise first, rise from their chambers. Go ahead. Then we. Then when, we. Which are alive. Which are alive. And remain. And remain to see the second coming. Shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. See that? The, one, the ones that's already dead are going to be with Christ in the clouds already. Those that are alive are going to be caught up to meet them in the air. Go ahead. With them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore? Comfort one another with these words. We should always comfort one another with these words. We, I understand when people pass away, we get sad. But comfort, you, faith comes in. You got to believe the dead in Christ going to rise first. Everybody understand that? Let's go on back. Y'all sounded kind of sad there. Yes, sir. Study and bring your faith up. Come on. Yuri, where we at now? Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 26. Go ahead. And the men that are received shall see it who have not tasted death from their birth. Now, now let's go on back to 2nd Ezra 7, 27. 2nd Ezra chapter 7, verse 27. And whosoever is delivered from the foresaid evils shall see my wonders. That's those one-third of men and women that's alive. Now watch verse 28. He's going to jump. Watch this. For my son Jesus shall be revealed with those that be with him. For my son Jesus shall be revealed with those that be... Who People be saying Christ ain't mentioned in the Old Testament. Now shut your black lips. Read it again. For my son Jesus shall be revealed with those that be with him. And they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. So now verse 28, pay close attention. He's talking about 400 years from the time of Ezra to the time of Christ which was in the first century. Write that down. So Ezra, the angel is telling Ezra 
For my son Jesus shall be revealed with those that be with him. And they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. So within 400 years from the time of Esdras, which was during what captivity? Persia. From that time, 400 years later, first century, they're going to see Christ born. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Okay, okay. Read that again. From my son Jesus shall be revealed with those that be with him. With those, I want to deal with those that be with him. Give me that in 2nd Ezra 14, 9. Those that be with him. 2nd Ezra 14, 9. Second Ezra, chapter 14 and verse 9. For thou shalt be taken away from all, and from henceforth thou shalt remain with my son, and with such as be like thee. Those spirits that's like Ezra, go ahead. Until the times be ended. Until the times be ended, meaning they'll come back at the last day, the last days. Let's go on back. Let me get to, let me give you some, I'm going to give you some more. Second Ezra 138. Second Ezra chapter 1, verse 38. And now, brother, behold, what glory, and see the people that cometh from the east, unto whom I will give for leaders Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Osias, Amos, and Micaiah, Joel, Abdias, and Jonas, Nahum, and Habakkuk, Sophonias, Agias, Zachary, and Malachi, which is called also an angel of the Lord. So the Lord already prophesied and told Ezra, those 15 spirits that he just mentioned, 15, I'm going to bring them back at the last days. Don't worry. Now give me 2 Ezra 2 and verse 17 and 18. 2 Ezra chapter 2, verse 17. Fear not, thou mother of the children, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord. Don't worry, Jerusalem. Go ahead. For thy help will I send my servants, he say, he say, that's Isaiah. Write that down. Isaiah and Jeremy and Jeremiah after whose counsel I have sanctified and prepared for thee 12 trees laden with diverse fruits. And there's going to be 12 other men that's going to come with Isaiah and Jeremiah. So the Lord is saying, don't worry. These spirits that's like Esdras, they're going to be at the last days. This is why he said the Lord told us, um, how could you say you, how does it go? Love, your, lo, love God who you never see, I can't quote, but hate your brother who you see. You understand that? You don't know if you have hate, you hating Abraham, you hating Isaac, you hating Jacob, you hating Isaiah, Jeremiah. That's why the Lord told us you got to put that spirit of hatred from you. Some Israelite camps hear this. They still, I hate that nigga. I hate that nigga. I hate, I hate. You don't know who you hating, brother. They call, the, the most high called Abraham his what? His friend. Here you are hating. You don't know who you hating. Let's go on back. Where we at, Yuri? Second Ezra 7. Yes, sir. And 27 again. Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 27. And whosoever is delivered from the foresaid evils shall see my wonders. Come on. For my son Jesus shall be revealed with those that be with him. Mm -hmm. And they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. So you see that and it says, and they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years, meaning 400 years from Esdras time in Persia. Meaning 400 years later, Christ would be born on the earth as a baby. Everybody with me so far? Okay, go ahead. After these years, after these years, shall my son Christ die? Shall my son Christ die? He would be crucified, die on the cross. And all men that have life. And all men that have life. And all men that have life. I want to deal with that part right there. And all men that have life. Read. I'm going to deal with it in a minute. And the world shall be turned into the old silence. Seven days. My question to you men. No, let me go over here. You. Yeah, you. You got a mic? I want you to explain that to me right there. After, it says, after these years shall my son Christ die, and all men that have life, 
and the world shall be turned into the old silence seven days, like as in the former judgment, so that no man shall remain. Just think about it. What happened after Christ died? After Christ died, the, uh, you had the uh, disciples was teaching the word of God. And what happened to them? They died as well. Okay, and what happened after that? After that, you went to slavery on ships, and we started to wake back you up. Skipped a whole, you skipped a whole... Yes. So after the disciples uh, was put to death, you had uh, us go back into slavery. Mm -hmm. You skipped. You, you went to 1441. You went from 70 AD to 14... What happened in between that? Well, you had the Dark Ages. There you go. Yes, sir. That's what it's talking about. Yes, sir. Have a seat. <laughs> Read it again, Officer Yuri. After these years shall my son Christ die, and all men that have a life. All the disciples, all the apostles, that's what that's talking about. And the world shall be turned into the old silence, seven days. That's the dark age period, what they call the dark ages. Go ahead. Like as in the former judgments, uh -huh. so that no man shall remain. So that no man sh shall remain. Uh, Alicia, Alicia, give me the first image I sent you right there. Put it on the screen. Come on. This is the first drawing of Christ. Can we zoom in? I don't need all those words. Zoom. And I want the words. I want the words at the top. Can you read that, Yuri? And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And he arose and departed to his house. Matthew 9, 2 and 7. Read the next section. Painting. From Dura Europis, 3rd century A.D. This picture, now let's look at the picture. 3rd century A.D. is the first picture found of Christ as a black man, healing the man with the palsy. Do y'all see that? A black man. Can y'all see that? Thank you. Uh, Yuri, I mean, Alicia, give me the next picture. Let's zoom in. Same time period. Read that. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Revelation 3 and 5. Let's get the words at the bottom of the picture. Priests on a fresco from Dura Europis, 3rd century A.D. So these are the Levites. Let's take a look at them. I want y'all to take a look at these Levites. Do y'all see what color they are? Black. So where is the anti-Semitism? When we bringing this information out, what, how, where where that charge come from? You're looking at the Levites painted on these walls way back during the third century A.D. Black, and I mean crystal clear. You can't look at the hands. You gotta. You really gotta. Sometimes you gotta let your let your brain recalibrate. Look at the different colors around the skin color. I'm sorry, Bishop. Look, 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 look at the garments that they wear and look at the hands. Look at the one on the far left so you can super clear. Look at the sleeve and look at the hand. Look at that. But we're anti-Semitic. We don't know what we're talking about. Nobody in IUIC painted these pictures. Right. They online, man. They want the name of the book. We'll give it to you captains, but we ain't going to put it out because then price shoot up $2,000, $3,000. Give me the next one about from 70 AD. This is uh, Vespasian and his son Titus. Vespasian was the governor, and then Titus was the gov I mean, the general over the army. They were instrumental in the destruction of Jerusalem. Okay, give me the next image. Zoom in on the highlighted section. Read that. Vespasian had been sent to the east by Nero to suppress the Jewish re rebellion. In 67, he recovered Galilee and the coastal cities of Judea. In the following year, captured Jericho and Emmaus, leaving Jerusalem increasingly isolated. Then, in July 69, Vespasian was proclaimed emperor by the Eastern legions, and a few months later, departed for Alexandria, leaving the completion of the Jewish war to his son Titus. To destroy us in 70 AD. Give me the next one. Get the highlighted section first. Read that. 
The Jewish war came to an end in spring 74. Right, because although they destroyed us in 70 AD, a remnant of us fled. It's going to tell you. Read. When the Roman commander, Flavius Silva, besieged the fortress of Masada. Many of us fled to Masada. Go ahead. The last rebel outpost. The Romans erected an encircling wall with attached forts, but eventually captured the rocky citadel only by building a great siege ramp against its western face. The defenders committed suicide rather than fall into their hands. All of those Israelites that was, now let's look at the picture, that was in Masada, committed suicide. They did not want to fall into the hands of Rome. Can you zoom in? With, yeah. That's Masada right there. That was in 74 A.D. Those of, those of our people that fled there, 74 A.D. Yeah, that was a fort. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next picture. Let's, yeah, zoom in on that. Read that. The seven-branch candlestick from the temple at Jerusalem, born in triumphal procession at Rome. Relief from the Ark of Titus in the form. You see, they know it's seven-branch manure. They know it ain't no eight-branch or nine-branch manure. It's seven-branch. Look at the picture. Now, this is the Arch of Titus from 70 A.D. You want the whole picture? Right, that's the seven-branch manure right there. Okay, of them glorifying it, they destroyed the black Jews of the nation of Israel. Give me the next image. This was the Colosseum that they set up, and they would put those of us that was captured. Hey, Yuri, get me Luke 21, 24. Read that for me. Keep that on the screen. Watch this. Luke chapter 21, verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. We fell by the edge of the sword in 70 AD. And shall be led away captive into all nations. Those of us that got caught, of our people that got caught, were led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Rome took over the land of Israel. But those of us that got captured were made slaves, and they made us gladiators in the Roman arenas, in their uh, pantheons, like the Colosseums, like you see here. When y'all see these movies like Spartacus and all that, that was our people in there that was fighting each other and lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. That was us. Now, I'm not saying they didn't have other slaves of other nations, but we were the vast majority that got captured. Give me the next image. Okay, these some more. Give me the next one. Yep, here's some more. Go on. Let's zoom in at the bottom down there. Read that. In the second century, the Jews of Africa. The Jews of what? Of Africa. Oh. See, these books right here, you got to get the old books. These newfangled books they take out of Africa. We don't want them to know about that. Read again. In the second century, the Jews of Africa and the city of Cyrene on the Mediterranean revolted from the Romans. And after slaying 200,000 Greeks and Romans, the Jews were subdued with a great number massacred about A.D. 114. Right, that's the second century. Give me the next image. Now, here's some of the Caesars. Let's zoom in. The one at the bottom right that I, that's highlighted. Yes. Y'all see that? It said, now this book, I ain't going to tell you about the book. Y'all see Septimius Severus. We always talk about him, okay, how he overthrew Rome in 193 AD. Now, let's go to the next page. Zoom in at the bottom highlight. Read that. Armies based in several of the provinces had already proclaimed their own commanders as emperor, and one of them, Septimius Severus. Now, let me show y'all something. See how they got the word cut off? And this, this major book companies, they tend not to cut a word in the center like that. But for this, they said, let's chop that word in half. They're hoping that the so-called black man's attention is so small that he, by the time he turned the page, he would have forgot the hell of what he just read. There you go. <laughs> Give me the next page now. Septimius Severus. Severus. Septimius Severus. Wait, wait, wait. Let's zoom in. Go ahead. Septimius Severus, African by birth. Right. And they hoping the Negroes just look at it and go can by birth. 
and they'll figure out it's African, meaning black. Go ahead. Thank, thank you, IT, for that little bomb over there. We thank you. Go ahead. And commander on the Dunu, Dun Danube, Danube. Mm -hmm. now marched on Rome and deposed the new emperor by auction. So Septimius Severus overthrew the Roman Empire. So now we often mention him and we glorify his name. However, there's something y'all need to know. Now, before I get it, give me the next book. Next book. That's him again, Septimius Severus. Give me the highlight section at the bottom. Now, this book says, read that. Septimius Severus was the first Roman emperor of North African origin. So they know he's black. They knew he was black. But now we often talk about him. Many Israelite camps glorify him. Watch what the history says he did. He was born at Lepsis. No, 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 no. Give me the next page, the next book. I give you the name of that book. Read the next book. Go ahead. The History of the Jews from the Destruction of Jerusalem to the Present Time. You see, read the year. Read the year. 1818. 1818. Now let's go inside the book. Pay close attention. Zoom in. Zoom in. Read that. A.D. 197. The Emperor Septimius Severus, in the commencement of his reign, declared war against the Samaritans and Jews. So he hated the Jews that kept the commandments. You kept the commandments. You was enemy number one. Go ahead. They had settlements in Galilee, but the prohibition, which excluded them from entering the precincts of Jerusalem, was still in force. They made laws. The real Israelites could not go back to Jerusalem. Septimius Severus kept that enforced. So although he was black, he kept those customs of Rome going. Okay, I just want y'all to see that. Okay. Go ahead, give me the next one. You can in, read that, you can read that. In order to reward the fidelity to him, when Pesni Pesni Pesinius, Pesinius Night nigger Pacinius Nigger was competitor for the throne. He allowed them the privileges of Roman citizens. So when Pacinius Niger, who was black, was coming in power, he said, I'm going to be nice to the Jews and allow them to come back. Okay? Those that want to keep the commandments, they can come back. Go ahead. He allowed them privileges of Roman citizens. Go ahead. Say what you're going to say, y'all. He was a rival to uh, Septimius Severus. They have that in other books too. And, 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 and in another book, and in the same book that I'm quoting, it also said that he got the name Niger because his neck was so black, which right. means BS. Uh -huh. <laughs> means exactly. his whole body was black. You ain't see a white man with a black neck. They, they actually red had neck. that written. That's they actually have it. that written. I'm about to say the name of the book, but I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> Give me the next page in the next book. That's a painting of Septimius Severus. And his family, he's black, right there. That's a picture of him right there with his family, okay? Now, give me the next emperor. This goes into an old man that had life. I mean, and it shall be returned to the old silence seven days. Give me the next one. Some of you may have heard of the Byzantine emperor named Justinian, okay? Read that. Justinian I, also known as Justinian the Great was the Eastern Roman Emperor from 527 to 565. His reign is marked by the ambitious, but only partly realized, Renovatio Imperi, or restoration of the empire. This ambition was expressed by the partial recovery of the territories of the defunct Western Roman Empire. Because it was split into two sections. Now give me the next book and next page. Pay close attention. Let's zoom in. I'm just going to tell you about it. Emperor Justinian, go ahead. The Emperor Justinian, who assumed the prerogative of deciding on all religious controversies, issued an edict which prohibited the celebra their celebrating the Passover according to their own calculations. Justinian made laws forbidding the black Jews from keeping the Passover according to our own calculation, go ahead. And obliged them to observe it at the same time with the Christian Church. They wanted us to celebrate Passover and Easter at the same time. That's what it's talking about. Raise it up. Zoom in at the bottom. Justinian also, at the request of the Council of Carthage, deprived those 
Deprive those of next page of this is what they do again. Deprive those of Africa of the exercise of their religion and commanded the prefect to convert their synagogues into churches. So in Africa, they forced the Jews in Africa to convert their synagogues into churches. Everybody see what's going on? They were forcing us to become Christians. And when I say Christian, I'm talking about from the time of Constantine and all of that. Easter Sunday, Christmas, all that garbage. That's what Justinian was forcing us to do, the black Jews. Y'all understand that? All right, let's get the next one. Okay, let's get some of them words at the bottom. Zoom in that whole section right there. Uh, it's verse 18 and 19. 18, transfiguration of the Lord. And, and 19 is what? Wit wisdom hath built her house. So let's look at the transfiguration of the Lord first. These were painted during the Middle Ages. That's Christ in the center, Moses on the right, Elijah on the left. What color are they? Black. Let's go down. You got Peter, James, and John. Black. Everybody see that? Then next to it is the other painting, Wisdom hath built her house. Look at all those black Jews, those Israelites, black men, black women. Y'all see Mary in the far right with baby Christ, right? Far top right. Okay. Do y'all see that? All them black faces. Not a white man in sight. All painted during the Middle Ages. Give me the next one. Let's say it again, Bishop. I'm sorry. What'd you say? The last image that you had. Go people. back. Up top. Right, that one right there. That looked like the Colosseum. Right, exactly. It looks just like the Colosseum. Mm hmm. Yep. All y'all see all black men, black women in there. Okay. Next picture. This is uh, the Holy Ghost. Zoom in on that. Read that. Fifty-two. Descent of the Holy Ghost. Descent of the Holy Ghost. Let's look at the image. The whole image. Do y'all look at it? Christ in the center. With the, can we zoom in? We don't need the words now. Christ in the center with a crown on his head. Black. Do y'all see that? This gives me goosebumps. This make, gives me chills. I love it. Now let's look at the 12 apostles. All black men. Let's go around. Look at that. Not a white man in sight. All praises, All praises to the Lord. And they're going to tell us. Yeah, that, you can get a Lord a hand for that. You ain't got to be ashamed. Do what you scared for. Give me, give, give me the next one. All praises. Give me the, I want the writing right there on the far left first. Read that. 20. The holy apostles, Peter and Paul, with scenes from their lives. So let's look at Peter and Paul. Peter and Paul in the center. Right there, black men. And notice scenes from their lives. All around the edges, they got uh, sections of their life. Always black. Look at that. They ain't going to teach this in Sunday school. They ain't going to show you this in church. Y'all see the y'all see the halos, right? And look at look at look at look at the figure of their heads inside the halos. You see them black. You can clearly see that. Look the at black angels. Right. Look at that. The question that you have to ask is who painted these? <laughs> who was over there to paint these images? Mm -hmm. Black people. Because we yep. was ruling. Yep. Get the one with, at the bottom. I think it was crucifixion. And they crucified Peter, I believe it was, upside down. Look at that. Yep, upside down they crucified him with evil black men nailing him to the cross. Say it on the mic so they can hear you. Look at the loincloth that's wrapped around his midsection as opposed to the legs and his body. And then you think about that abomination that they give you, that they call you, that they say they really look like Charles Manson. Right. But they make you say it's Jesus. <laughs> they got it hanging up in your churches, but more importantly, got it hanging in your minds. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Give me the next image. So how they get from black to white? This is how right here. Called iconoclast or iconoclasm. 
Yeah, so you see a black Jesus in the background? Yep. And look what the orthodox Edomite is doing, painting a white image. Painting, look, go ahead. I mean, if you can't see that, there's the, Stevie Wonder could see this. Exactly. You're right about that. Ray Charles could see this. Mm-hmm. I mean, you see the black image on the wall behind it, and the man is literally painting, painting a white picture. Exactly. Pull out. That's what he's doing. And look at the very back. You got one of the leaders of uh, Russia in the, right behind. Right I think back that was there. Saint Basil. Right. I think that's who that yeah, image black. is. Yeah, black. Look at the right. black. Right there. But they want all this history to be hidden, secret, never let them know that they're great. This is why if you ever notice like, uh, movies like Black Panther, it'll always start off and say, this is fictional. They don't do that with Superman. They don't do that with Batman or Wonder Woman. But with black characters, they say this is fictional. Like I was watching, what's that one on Netflix with Idris Elba? The Harder They Fall. It starts off, although these characters may be real, this story is fictional and not to be taken seriously. That's so that in our minds, we never say, you know what? Let's rise up and be great. We are great people. No, never let that go in our heads. Never let that go into the heads of your young sons and your young daughters. So this is a whole conspiracy against us. For them to go through, I mean, and that's an obvious point there because they do not do that for so-called Superman. They don't do that for Batman. They don't do that for none of these, none of these uh, characters that these little uh, white kids uh, look up to and, and, and mimic themselves after and all. They don't do that for them. But when they bring on the, the, like the movie that you're bringing up now, then they put that in there. Right. For them to go that far to make sure that you don't get any kind of glimmer of confidence and all of that, that's telling you how special you really are. Mm-hmm. For them to go through that link. Yep. Hey, black, the move, the black Panther part one has such an impact worldwide on black people. They said the next one, we got to make sure all the men are feminized and the women are the leaders. They said, we got to kill that thought. They don't want you men to get any sense of greatness, of honor in you. So they said, put their women over them. That's what they did in part two. Okay, I don't know if y'all saw it. Y- yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I, uh, Bishop is on the roll, and you know, I, well, nobody will even uh, want to attempt to get in his way when he's rolling like this. Here. But I just need one scripture, just to go along with what we're reading. Psalms 83, please. That third verse. Because this is... This, again, is going to point to who who, this, who all this great history is talking about. And just like the point of what Bishop mentioned about in the movies, they try to put that statement in there to keep you asleep. And you, we still, we go to church, and we don't, we're sitting up in the church with the Bibles open and all of that, well, some of them, and they still don't realize that they're the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Come on, who's reading? Psalm Read that. chapter 83, verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. When you think about a people that have had crafty counsel taken against them, who comes? And let's, let's, let's be real men and let's be real women. Who's the subject of this kind of conspiracy in the world? And then if you're really honest, you know it's talking about us. No other people is, is subjected to this kind of uh, serious diabolical thinking. Read that statement again. They have taken crafty counsel. For for the whole world to have taken crafty counsel to focus on these people here, us, the so-called Negroes, Puerto Ricans, and Haitians, and all the the, the 12 tribes of Israel. Read. Against thy people. Against thy people. Listen. And consulted against thy hidden ones. Your information about you is hidden. That's why they say anything about you that's about being great. We're going to say it's fictional so that you don't attribute yourselves to any kind of greatness. Greatness, Why? To keep you hidden. Read on. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. What is a Negro? That's not a nation. Look at these names that we have on us. I'm talking about outside of the Bible. There's no such people as that. So we are the subject of all this conspiracy. We are the subject of, of, of what it said earlier about um, um, a crafty council, that's us. Crystal clear. Nobody else fits in terms of the subject of who this is talking about but us, and you know that. All right, Bishop, that's it. I'm going to leave. 
Yes, read on. Yeah. The, oh. Uh, uh, no, no, I was going to say it. Was there more in that, Bishop, you were saying? Yeah. Read. Yes, sir. That the name of Israel right. may you. be no more in remembrance. So that's telling you crystal clear that the true Israelites, just like Isaiah 1 and 3 says, they don't know that they're the Israelites. That the name of Israel may be no more in the true Israelites' mind. So the whole planet is against the real Jews waking up. So the ADL, SPLC, Green Black, all of them, they all fulfilling what we just read here. So you are the Jews. You're the Israelites. Super crystal clear. Yep. I was going to add to what Bishop said. When you, even when you, that what just happened in, in, in Dallas with our Passover, the way we dress, the way we carry ourselves, uh, they never see black people like that before. That not one incident where they had to call the cops. Stuff like that shocked them. Stuff like that, that's why they call us hate group. What we doing? We pushing greatness among black people. We, that, they don't like that. They spend billions of dollars to make sure we never, we never rise up. So now he come us pushing greatness among the people and they have a big problem with that. They were, you should hear people talk about her Passover. Like, why are you I see pushing greatness among them? Why are you I see telling these people they're great? They do not like that. They have a big problem with that. That's why they will come against us. I'm telling you. They'll come against us. That's why they say we a hate group. They, give, they put all type of name on us. Why? Because we're pushing greatness on our people. They do not like that. The billions of dollars that you was talking about that they spent money on, they, they invested in turning your own people to hate great imagery as well. Yep. A lot of the attacks that we're getting is actually from the same people that's, that's hated by them, but that's hated by all of the, all of the world. They have been programmed to hate the greatness. So not only did they spend money to hide this information from us, they also spent money, billions of dollars, in indoctrinating our old people to be against their own greatness and imagery of greatness. Real quick. Bitch, mind? Go, put that, uh, that image you just had on the screen right here, the woman king. I want to show you subliminals. Can anybody see it? Now, if you notice, I'm telling you, white man is a devil. He, he, listen, anyway, here's the point. The biggest star on this cast is Viola Davis. Who's the next biggest star? That brother right there. Look where his name is at, at the back of the list. He's the he's next, as far as known actors, or, uh, and that, he's the next one in line, and that's how they generally line them up. We know it's not the way they line them up in a picture, except she's standing forward because they put her name first in the marquee. His name is at the back of the line. The least important one. And he's the second largest star out of all those people. You don't know the rest of those people. You're just learning them. Yeah. That's all part of subliminal. Alicia, let's go to the next image. <clears throat> Alicia, yeah, yeah, right there. Now, if you see right there, <clears throat> if you zoom in at the top, you see on the top right, I mean top left, top left, you see Mary and a baby Jesus. What color are they? Well, if Jesus is a, bl a black baby right there, then who the hell is that monstrosity, that mofo right there? Not that one. The, yeah, that, who the hell is that? That's what they do. That, this, uh, you know, I'm about to go in. Listen, okay. You see the image of Mary and Christ. You see the other image below that one. Christ is a man of color. Then look at that idolatry with that egg right there. That's, that's right there is paganism right there. Yep. That paganism right there. And then the, then, then, then the AIDS patient over there, that, well, go back to the, the right there. He looked like he just got, he just got his results in. <laughs> that MF right there. That's the devil. Look at that dude. Lord, I shouldn't have slept with those men now. You know, I was, at, I was at going to the club and listening to disco all night. Look what happened. Now. Go to the bottom image. Ephraim be tattooing that all over there. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Some of y'all in here got that painting yeah. tattooed on y'all. Yeah, arms. you know. Yeah. Look at that. They paint new images, paint over the black ones, and they put those Caucasian images in the public for our, our women and children mm -hmm. so that they will always hate the image of our, the true image of our people. Okay. All right, give me the next, the next one, Alicia. 
This is in Russia. Do y'all see the black images in the backgrounds? Wow, wow. All them black images of the forefathers. And in the, you got the white man in Russia doing his satanic rituals. Okay? And these are things they don't put in the public. As they don't put it in the churches. They don't put it in the school system. Now, the churches, some of the churches see, oh, y'all come in with hatred. We come in to show y'all the truth with these images. Oh, no, that's hate. Oh, we all equal. Then why you got white images all throughout the church? All this predates, predates all that uh, whitewashing. Right. And here's the point. When you, when you bring these out and you make it clear, because most of us never seen these things. When you bring it out, it's undeniable evidence. These are in your churches that you control today. Mm -hmm. And God put the spirit on you not to touch it. Because yep. if you could have destroyed all this and not leave records, you would have. But now when you bring it out, we're a hate group. We're because we're telling you, this man, listen to me, then call it what you want. But this is the truth. Exactly. You can't deny Christ is black. In 2023, how can you believe Christ is white unless you're just retarded? Yep. <laughs> Come on, man. Pull back out. Witchcraft. Yep, witchcraft. Look at the ones on the left, far left. Let's look at the, the yeah, right there. No, over, over a little more. Oh, yeah, that's far left. Look at those dark, those dark images. Okay. The hell is this? Give me the next one where they got a statue of, uh, they got a statue of Peter in the background, black. Okay. That's what they do. And they pray to those images, idolatry. They pray to these images. Okay. Give me the next one where they carry an, they made an ark of a covenant. Look at it, all black people on that ark. All black faces, zoom in, that they carry around. But your sons and daughters, we don't know this stuff. And we're the hate group when we bring it out. Look at all the dark faces. Look at that, all black images on that. And they, they don't change because they want a blessing from God. They ain't they gonna get destruction, that's all they're gonna get. Pull back. I didn't make this up, I didn't, I didn't paint this, I didn't take a photo of this. It's in their own books. Okay. Give me the next page. Here's another book. Read that, Alicia. I mean, Yuri, Officer Yuri. A tribute for the Negro being a vindication of the moral, intellectual, and religious capabilities of the colored portion of mankind. Can we go down to the bottom when it was uh, this book was published? Zoom in at the bottom. 1848. 1848. Where were we, brothers? Slavery. So this book is for white eyes only. Let's go inside the book. See what white folks wrote to themselves. That bottom section right there. Read that. Yes, sir. The bottom section, a remarkable fact. Yes. Yes, sir. A remarkable fact in the history of Loango in the empire of Congo is that the country, according to a statement which was fully credited by Oldendorp, himself a writer of most correct judgment and of impeachable veracity contains many Jews settled in it. Many Jews settled in Loango, the empire of the Congo. Next page. Who retain their religious rights and the distinct habits which keep them isolated from other nations. Though thus separate from the African population, they are black. Can we get a bunch of they and, know the Jews are black. Go ahead. And resemble the other Negroes in every respect as to physical character. It is probably in allusion to this case that Pennington in his textbook says the descendants of a colony of Jews originally from Judea settled on the coast of Africa are black. How are you going to say we made this up? How are you going to say we made this stuff up? Give me the next one. Yeah, exactly. That's a note. That's a note to white people. They share that information backwards and forwards among themselves so that they could be abreast with our history. Yep. That's the reason why they all these books exist, in case anybody was asking, say, well, why would they write these kinds of records? And why would they because they want to make sure that all of their people, the ones that's in power and in top and all of that, are they on need code. To, right, are on code. That's the point. But do not teach them. Meaning us. Exactly. Now, what about the white folks that call themselves Jewish? Here's the next book. 
Let's read this, Yuri. Yes, sir. Perhaps the most interesting aspect of the Khazar's history uh -oh. was their adoption of the Jewish religion. For centuries, the Khazar territory was a major region of settlement for Jewish refugees. Write this down. This was around 700 A.D. The Khazars that converted, this was around 700 A.D., around there. That For Jewish refugees escaping persecution. And these refugees soon introduced Judaism to the Khazars. The king so we introduced Judaism to the Khazars. Go ahead. The Khazars dwelt in the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. Go ahead. The king of, the, of Khazaria, Bulan. His name was Cajun Bulan. Go ahead. Became convinced that Judaism was the true religion. And under his leadership and that of his successors, some of the Khazar people also adopted Judaism. Mass conversion. Go ahead. Synagogues and yeshivas were established in Khazaria. And the study of the Torah and Talmud became commonplace. Just like today, they study Torah and Talmud together. Go ahead. The Khazars underscored their allegiance to the Jewish faith by adopting the Hebrew script and Hebrew personal names, even to the extent of naming some of their children after Jewish holidays, such as Pesach and Hanukkah. Jews lived in many of the major Khazar towns. Read. Khazaria exerted a tremendous impact on world history. The Khazars' persistence against Arab invaders eventually halted their conquest north of the Caucasus. Because the Khazars were of the Caucasus Mountains. Give me the next page. Exactly. Read that. Watch this. The medieval German legend of the Red Jews. The Red Jews. Remember in Genesis 25 it said the first came out what? Red all over like in hairy garment. Read that again. The medieval German legend of the Red Jews derived from a combination of these three stories about Alexander the Great's enclosure of monstrous nations behind a large mountain northeast of the Mediterranean, about Gog and Magog, said to be the destroyers of the world at the end of time, and three, about the 10 lost tribes of Israel. Because the Khazars were trying to say that that was them. Go ahead. German writers used the Red Jews legend to express anti-Jewish sentiments and fears about the anticipated apocalypse. They said that these people, these Red Jews, they're going to bring about the apocalypse. Watch this. Go ahead. The term Red Jews was chosen because medieval Germans saw red hair and red beards as signs of a dishonest, deceitful individual. That's white man saying that, right. Thus, red Jews were Jews who had red hair and red beards, according to Andrew Gow. That's Genesis 25, 25. Jump down to the next highlighted section. Yes, sir. According to Albrecht, the red Jews are enclosed between two tall mountains called Gog and Magog. <laughs> These Jews are warlike and present a military threat to Christians. Mm, talk about the black Christians. Now let's go to the next book. So this is dealing with where all men that had life and the world shall be turned into the silence. I don't want y'all to forget why we're going here. This was all during the Middle Ages. Read that. The Jews, a study of race and environment. By who? By Morris Maurice Fishburg. Maurice Fishburg. This is Amalek. Jump down. When was this written? Zoom in. 1911. 1911. Let's go inside this book. 1911. Read that. In Abyssinia, there is a large colony of Jews called Falashes who are of pure African type. Next highlighted section. They are described as tall, muscular people with dark brown skin, like that of the Abyssinians in general. Their hair is black and frizzly, or woolly, as is also the beard, which they never shave, but only cut with scissors. Many of them are black and have thick lips, which are upturned and are particularly, are, and are practically Negroes. They are. Let's go to the next page. Watch this. 
Zoom into that. Talking about white, white Jews, so-called Amalek. Watch this. These fair-haired Jews. Them red-haired Jews. Go ahead. Created a problem for anthropologists. It is a question whence these Indo-Germanic Jews, as Virchow called them, have found their way into the midst of a dark complexion race like the Jews. Do y'all see that? They found themselves in the midst of a dark complexion race like the Jews. Now let's go into the next book page. Give me the next page. Y'all heard of this devil right here called Martin Luther? You get Christian apologists. They say, oh, he's one of the church fathers. He's the church father. That de what's that devil's name? Not that I give a damn. That devil that, that's all, he's on, he's a troll. Ricer, Ricer. Let's go to the next, inside this next book. Let's zoom in. Uh, look, raise it up. Let's read this part. Listen good. Now what you're going to read about with Martin Luther during the Middle Ages is the same way that devil, Mark Ricer, tries to have the Christian apologists approach you. Watch this. Read that. In defense of the Jews, Europe in the meantime had witnessed the rise of a rebellion within the Roman Catholic Church. Martin Luther, an Augustinian monk and an ordained priest, had started out to preach reform and found an unexpectedly large following among the people and the nobility of Germany. So these were white people that rebelled against the Catholic Church and they started the Protestant uh, revolution, whatever you want to call the word. Go ahead. Before long, his movement broke completely with the traditions and organization of Catholicism. Pay close attention. Go ahead. One of Luther's charges against the church and its methods was its harsh treatment of the Jews. You're treating those black Jews so bad. Let's watch. Let's, oh, Martin Luther had cared for us. Let's see. Go ahead. He used very strong language to describe the attacks and the persecutions by which priests and monks sought to obtain the conversion of the Jews to Christianity. The proper way, he argued, was the way suggested by the best among ancient fathers of the church, the way of kindness and consideration. Y'all see that? So Martin Luther's strategy was use kindness and consideration. Listen to these white apologists. They always try to come with kindness and consideration. We care for your soul. We don't want you to be lost. We love you. It's the same way. Now watch this. Go to the next one. Wait, raise it up. Let me see. Yeah, go to this. Let me see. Go back. Go back. Go back. All right, go to the next page. I want this section here where it says, yeah, that section right there. Watch this. Pay, close it a little bit. I want you to pay close attention. Luther's disappointment. Read that. Luther's disappointment. Luther had thought that he could win the Jews with a few kind words. Like your, your ricers, the vocab, the Edomite, using kind words. Go ahead. When this did not happen, he was bitterly disappointed. He now attributed everything to the stubbornness of the Jews and to what he chose to call the falsehoods contained in Jewish literature. That's what Ricer does today. Watch this. Watch this. He outdid the Catholic clergy in the vile terms which he heaped on the Jews and Judaism. Watch this. And advised their complete extermination. That's the same way this devil is. He hates all Israelites. He hates black people waking up to the truth. Don't be fooled by the nice words. And it, yeah, he believes right. in white Jesus right. and all that. Go ahead. Don't be fooled by the rap beats and all that, too. That's an insult, really. You, right. We put the black music, put his hat on backwards. Right. Uh, it's, really an, it's really a damn insult for our people who are sitting up there talking about something. Oh, he's really for us. It's a, it's a complete skit. Give me the next page. Let's zoom in on that section there. Read that. There were several reasons why the ghetto came into being just at that time. The expulsion from Spain and Portugal. We got kicked out of Spain and Portugal. This is in the 1400s. Considered the most advanced European states of that day. Spread the idea that Jews ought not to be permitted to live in Christian society. So Martin Luther did not want us to live in Christian society. Next section. 
the middle of the 16th century. Witness a revival of bigotry. Pro Protestantism. Prote thank you. Protestantism came into existence. This is the, why some Christians say I'm Protestant, meaning they're protesting against the Roman Catholic Church. Read. And Luther in his later years. Luther, Martin Luther in his later years. Went to extremes in advising the extermination of the Jews. Do y'all see how, how far this white this devil went? To the extermination of our people. Go ahead. At the same time, Catholicism was fighting the new Protestant heresies with might and main. Part of its method was to brand the new religious movements as born under Jewish influence. Thus, both parts of Christianity made the, treat made the treatment of the Jews as social undesirables a test of religious zeal. So the Christians, the white Christian Protestants hated us as well as the Roman Catholic Church, Church hated us. They both institutions wanted us dead. Exterminate. Everybody understand that? Give me the next book. Some people are asking, they're saying, who is Mark Reiser? Mark Reiser is the man that they, people known as Vocab Malone. Okay, he, we, he, we call him Haman, by the way. Haman in the Bible. He is Martin Luther, he is Martin Luther reincarnated back on earth. And listen, that right there, I never knew that. Mm -hmm. I never knew that. Can I read the scripture, please? Um... Psalms 55, 21, because, and you know something, and this is a, a message to, to all those other Israelite camps, I don't know, don't entertain this dude, he is not worthy of it, he, right. why are we, he's not, he's, he has nothing to do with the Bible, we gonna, why would we entertain somebody with our word to prove that we're the Israelites, we don't have nothing to prove to these guys, that dude is beneath us. Watch it real quick, uh, 55, 21. Psalms chapter 55, verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. And that's the same spirit that Martin Luther had. He came kind, he had these fair speeches, but you can see in this guy, Risa, you can see the demon coming out of him. He's frustrated because he sees the kingdom of heaven being built right in front of him, and he doesn't know how to stop it. He does not know how to stop or He's trying, but you're kicking against the pricks. This will not end until Christ returns and we're established back on the earth. That's right. the city. Exactly. And to, go, and, to go, and to go along with what's been said so far, because that's right, give the Lord a hand for that thing. To go along with what was what was pointed out about how does how his words are smooth and all of that to get to get you lined up with that madness, think about the week that was snuff, that was snuffed out by him. You've had these twins that was with us. You had uh, what's that sister Gina Blue. You have a whole lot. You got a, you got a few of them. Jada producer, all those guys. Where they at now? And, and and does he even care for them? His his mission is to snuff them out of this gospel and then send them to wasteland. Listen, and you know it's exactly something? what we're reading in the history. Y'all keep playing around, playing with this dude. Listen, and you, and you see, with all the atrocities of these Edomites killing us in the streets, he's not speaking about none of that stuff. He ain't speaking about none of our people missing. He's not, he is, his sole focus is against us. Meanwhile, we out there in the front lines. We today, we had a brother that got killed in the streets, and we out there trying to change these things. That dude's sole mission is stop the kingdom of God on earth. That's his job. Let me tell you something. All praise to the most. High. Bishop, your research is impeccable. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you something. Your research is impeccable. It, it, listen, I thought I knew history, but that right there just blew me away. And I know Martin Luther, but boy, woo. <laughs> Let's go to that next book. Read that. The Bible in Ancient and Modern History, containing the universal history of the colored and the Indian race. What year was this? 1844. Where were we in 1844? So this is for white eyes only. Let's go inside. That bottom section. Read that. Surely then the natives of the deserts of America must have been a people who once knew the God of Israel. That's heavy. So they know 
the so-called American Indians are Israelites. Go ahead. They main we ain't talking about $5 Indians either. Go ahead. They maintained for more than two millenniaries the tradition of him in many respects correct. What possible account can be given of this, but that they were descendants of Israel and that the God of Israel has had his merciful eye upon them with the view in his own time to bring them to light and affect their restoration. The celebrated William Penn gives accounts of the natives of Pennsylvania, which go to corroborate the same point. So these scholars know that so-called American Indians are the, are the Israelites. They know that. Okay. From there, let's go back to the scriptures now. All praises to the Lord. All praises. Give me, let's go back to 2nd Ezra 7. And what verse you left off at, Yuri? And verse, verse 30. 20. Yes, sir, verse 30. Second Ezra chapter 7 and verse 30. And the world shall be turned into the old silence seven days. Now, in case y'all didn't put the pieces of the puzzle together, remember in Matthew 25, it said what happened to those ten virgins while they all slumbered and slept. That was during the dark ages, all the way through slavery. Everybody got that, okay? Read it again. And the world shall be turned into the old silence seven days, like as in the former judgments, so that no man shall remain. No man with truth remained. Go ahead. And so I you might ask, well, during the dark ages, they knew Christ was black and all that. But remember, during the dark ages, we were worshiping what? Idols. We were worshiping idols. Those paintings we did, we was worshiping that. Okay? Y'all understand that? And many of us was forced into Christianity, and we were fighting against each other. All the wars y'all read about during the Dark Ages, that was us. Us fighting us, then fighting against this white man. It was a war. When y'all see the movie uh, Braveheart, that was us. Okay? Everybody understand what I'm saying? All right, Yuri, read it again. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. And the world shall be turned into the old silence seven days, like as in the former judgment so that no man shall remain. Go ahead. And after seven days. And after seven days. The world that yet awaketh not shall be raised up. Shall be raised up. And that shall die that is corrupt. So the world that, uh, that uh, shall be raised up is what we read. Then all those virgins did what? Anybody remember? After that. It says there was a voice at midnight, then all those virgins did what? They awoke and trimmed their lamps. Y'all be forgetting. That's why I said take good notes. There's pieces to the puzzle. I'm, I'm filling in for you to history. Okay? From there, give me Ezekiel 37.10. We're dealing with the part about us being raised up. Like we read in Matthew 25, then all those virgins woke up. Read that, Yuri. E Ezekiel. Chapter 37 and verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. Uh -huh. And they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. So what we're reading here is when those virgins woke up as Israelites, five of them were wise, five of them were foolish. Five kept the commandments in obedience. The five foolish said, hey, we really, we could turn corners. We could go to the left and right of God's law. We really ain't got to keep it. We're under grace. They ran with that. Okay. Revelation 11, 11. Revelation chapter 11, verse 11. And after three days and a an half. And after 350 years. The spirit of life from God into into them. The spirit of life from God. Put them, come on, y'all. Put, put the pictures up. The spirit of life from God entered into them. I'm trying to wait for an image to pop up on the screen. Any day now. You showed that one already. Let's look at, yeah, yeah. You showed that one too, but it's fine. Put that one up. I just like the colors. Read it again, Yuri. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. And after three days and a half. The spirit of life from God entered into Can we them. see the next image, Yuri? Uh, Alicia, please. Thank you. I like this. That's some powerful stuff right there. Give me the next one. This is the spirit of life from God entered into them. Give me the next one. Okay. That's right. Give me the next one. Yeah, my hair is all messed up, right? <laughs> give me the next one. Come on. Give me the next one. 
That's cool. I like that too. Give me the next one. Come on. That's some good stuff right there. That's bad. That's bad right there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's it. That's it. Read it again, Yuri. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into Give me into that them. next one. Give me that next one. Oh, I like that one right there. So, yeah, that's the real right there. That's some powerful stuff. That's some powerful imagery right there. Give me the next one, Alicia. Give me the next image. Yeah, that's some powerful stuff right there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's good. That's good right there. That's some powerful stuff. See, this stuff, these images excites us right there. Give me the next one. This is where white folks don't want us to look at stuff. Look at that. Look at that. Ah, Santa, come look at us. Give me the next one. Look at that. Look at that. Give me that next image. Oh, that reminds me of Captain Severus right there for some reason. I just think about him when I see that. You know, give me that next one right there. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Give me the next one. Come on. Come on. Yeah, that's nice right there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Look at that. Somebody come look at this. Come on. Come on, Alicia. Come on, Alicia. I just like this stuff. Come on. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, Alicia. Come on, Alicia. Come on. Come on. Yeah, uh, we want the white man to get mad. Get mad now. Come on. Come on, Alicia. Come on, man. Oh, you ran? Oh, Yuri. Give me the next. Go read the next. Read the scripture again. Yes, sir. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God into into them, uh -huh. and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Y'all see that part? And great fear fell upon them which saw them. That great fear translates to hatred. Hatred. That's what it translates to. No, they're waking up. We spend billions of dollars to keep these niggas asleep. Now they're waking up to the truth. Call them a hate group. Call them racist. Call them anti-Semitic. Say it, say it. I said we're, we're the public enemy number one. That we're worse than Al-Qaeda and stuff like that. They said this. Mm. Unbelievable. Exactly. You can put that on the screen, Alicia. You can put that on the screen. That's some good stuff right there. So now, as we're waking up and they're getting mad, give me Revelation 12 and 15. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 15. Uh-huh. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. Y'all see that part right there? The serpent. That serpent is the so-called white man. He cast out, his, out of his mouth. The, his mouth is his what, brothers? Media. Media. Whether it's internet, television, newspapers, radio. That's his mouth that he controls. Go ahead. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood uh -huh. after the woman uh -huh. that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. That's why they try to carry us away with their lies, but it's not working. It's not working. Hey, watch this precept. Um, I think it's Isaiah 59, if I'm not mistaken. Elisha, find me that. Isaiah 59, I think, I think, I think. Let me look. I got to look for this. I haven't read it in years, but it's Isaiah. It's in Isaiah. Isaiah. Is it 59? Uh, Isaiah 59, 19. Here we go. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the West. Where do we live, brothers? In the West. Go ahead. And his glory from the rising of the sun. That's our brothers and sisters that's over there in the East, in Africa, in Europe. Go ahead. When the enemy shall come in like a flood. See, that, that serpent is the enemy. When the enemy shall come in like a flood with his lies. The spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against Let's him. see what that standard is that's being lifted up. Go back to Revelation 12. It's going to tell you the standard. Revelation 12, 16 is going to explain it. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Guess what that is when it says the earth helped the woman. That's the word of God. But the, thank you. But the word of God don't operate on its own. It needs you men to stand up and preach and teach valiantly. My voice cracked there, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Read it. read it again, read it again, read it again. And the earth helped the woman. Because when it didn't say, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. We're the earth brothers. We're the earth sisters. Read it again. And the earth helped the woman. Uh -huh. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood 
with the dragon cast out of his mouth. That's the standard. This Bible is the standard. We're using the word of God to swallow up every lie they push out against this truth. Everybody understand that? That's the part we're at right now. But the party ain't over. The party ain't over. We're about to enter verse 17. Read verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. Why is she going to be mad with us? Because we swallow up all their lies. They're going to be so mad. Watch what they're going to do. Go ahead. And went to make war. Make what? Make war. Make what? Make war. Oh, go ahead. With the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Those five wise, those five wise virgins. We got to make war against them. We got to lay hands on them. Watch this. Watch this. Second Ezra 16, 68. It's going to explain this war. What do you mean war? Yeah, we're in a spiritual war. No! The spiritual war was verse 16. The physical war is verse 17. Now it's going to get into some detail. Read that. Second Ezra. keep cracking. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Second Ezra, chapter 16 and verse 68. Come on. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away. That great wrath of a great multitude is mobs of white folks filled with fear and anger, mad because we're waking up. Your vocab Malones, your Christian apologists, go ahead. Your ADLs, your uh, Anti-Defamation League, SPLC, Canary Mission, that's them, that's them, that's them, the great red dragon. Go ahead. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you. The certain of you that they're going to take away is the five foolish. You Israelite men and you Israelite women that play games in this truth. Here today, gone tomorrow, you righteous amongst us now, but you sin like hell when you're not in our midst. Go ahead. And take away certain of you and feed you. Being idle. Being what? Being idle. Some of you got idle time. You know what the scriptures say about idleness? Give me that precept you ever hear about being idle? About the servant. You know what I'm talking about? Somebody help me. About the servant. Idleness teaches much evil. That's what I want. Sirach 33, 27. Thank you. Ecclesiastic is chapter 33 and verse 27. This is what it means by idle. Go ahead. Send him to labor that he be not idle. Why? For idleness teacheth much evil. When you got idle time, you, 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 you're involved in much evil. When you got idle time, you're involved in much evil. Go back to 2nd Ezra 16. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. Mobs of people. Go ahead. And they shall take away certain of you uh -huh. and feed you, being idle. Idleness teaches what? Much evil. Go ahead. Being idle with things offered unto idols. Follow white man philosophies. Follow it. It's saying the same thing Revelation 13 talks about, that you can't buy or sell unless you have the mark, which is their philosophy. It's going into the same thing. Go ahead. And they that consent unto them. And they that consent unto them. You rebellious, you idolatrous, you rebellious Israelites, you five foolish, shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden underfoot. But what about the rest of us? Go ahead. The five wise. Go ahead. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. A great insurrection. That's what Revelation 12, 17 about they shall go to make war against the remnant of her seed that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. That's the war. That's the war. Read it again. Read it again. I want this to sink in your heads of what's going to happen. For there Don't shall, sleep on what's going to happen. Go ahead. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. Read. They shall be like madmen. These mobs of white folks and rebellious blacks shall be like madmen. Go ahead. Sparing none. Sparing none. Go ahead. But still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. That's what's going to come. That's the war the Bible's talking about. Read. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their house. So you brothers and sisters with homes and houses, you better enjoy it while it lasts. Enjoy it while it lasts because it's telling you prophetically. Read it again. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Read. Then shall they be known who are my chosen 
and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. That's the five wise, the five wise virgins. That's what they're going to have to go through. The only way you're going to, you know that you're called and chosen is if you go through this coming tribulation. Everybody understand that? And it's saying the same thing. Give me Matthew 24, 9. Christ said the same thing. Go ahead. Matthew 24, verse 9. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. To be what? Afflicted. Afflicted. And shall kill you. And shall what? And shall kill you. Yeah, that's that war. Go ahead. And ye shall be hated for of all nations for my name's sake. You know why we're going to be hated of all nations? Propaganda. Propaganda. They're a hate group. They're racist. They're anti-Semitic. They, they want to kill gay people. They're going to get all nations against us. Read. And then shall many be offended. And many of you that are idle, the five foolish virgins... And then shall many of you be offended, go ahead. And shall betray one another. And you shall betray one another. You're going to be be betray those of us that st stand firm in the commandments of God. Men and women, go ahead. And shall hate one another. And shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise. Uh-huh. And shall deceive many. That's the one world religion they're trying to come up with, go ahead. And because iniquity shall abound, sin shall rise, the love of many shall wax cold. Go ahead. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. He that shall endure to the end. Endure what? The affliction, the persecution, the tribulation that's prophesied to come. Only then will you be saved. That's what the Lord promised and prophesied. Y'all see that? From there, from there. Go back to 2nd Ezra 7. Am I going too fast? Okay. Second Ezra 7, 32. Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 32. 